This is a story of one of history's great dreams, a dream coming true in the green and lonely highlands of Brazil. Here, where wildcats once roamed, a proud and industrious nation is fashioning its dream into a truly 20th century city. The new capital, Brasilia, Cidade da Esperanza, City of Hope is how the dream was expressed by Andre Malro. Boldness, energy, and confidence, he wrote, this may be the crest given to you by posterity. The boldness and concept comes from the mind of city planner Lucio Costa. The energy and confidence in design comes from the talented hand of architect Oscar Niemeyer. The Planalto Palace, Palace of the Highlands, and the Plaza of the Three Powers, executive, judicial, and legislative, form a triangle of architectural genius. Its apex is the Congressional Center. Two skyscrapers guard and serve the heart of Brazil's democracy. The Senate is a dome, the House a bowl. Complementing the architecture of the Planalto Palace, is another guardian of liberty, the Supreme Court, rising from the raw red earth of the new frontier. Its serene harmony of design is in keeping with the rest of the governmental trinity. With a boldness of imagination which marks all his work, Oscar Niemeyer conceived the Museum of Brasilia as twin geometric forms, seemingly lighter than air. The sculpted head of President Juscelino Kubitschek relieves its simple planes and angles. Beyond the governmental plaza of the three powers stretch the 11 ministries. In these structures of clean line and glass expanses, the complex problems of administration will seek their solutions. Lucio Costa wrote of his design for Brasilia, it arose from the primary gesture of one who marks or takes possession of a place, the sign of the cross itself. Alvarado Palace, Palace of the Dawn, is the presidential home. Of this building, Niemeyer said, we've sought to adopt the principles of simplicity and purity, which in the past have distinguished the great works of architecture. A simple, compact design in which the beauty is derived from its proportions and from the structure itself. Costa's appraisal of Niemeyer's work, written over a decade ago, still seems relevant. He said, it has the kind of individualism that one may term generic and fruitful. It represents a leap forward in time because it's a prophetic revelation of what architecture means for the society of the future. Costa's city has been planned to house over a half million people. Along its second axis, super blocks are being built, each a self-contained village with its own schools and shops. This design is functional and consistent with the city's entire concept. Windows, a traditional Brazilian detail, are frequently shaded and accented with louvers or tile. Neighborhoods are spawning in the new capital, and children are in happy accord with their surroundings. Supermarkets have opened in the residential blocks. 
Inside is the efficiency which self-service has brought to another of life's necessities. One of Brasilia's first churches, Our Lady of Fatima, symbolizes the inherent faith of the Brazilian people. Its exterior decor of Brazilian tile is a silent hymn to the dove of peace. Brasilia's first big date with history was the 21st of April, 1960. Inauguration day for the new capital. As though drawn by destiny's magnet, Brazilians from the length and breadth of the land came to their proud new city. For this day, when Brasilia became the nation's new capital, was the fruit of an old dream, a dream which began almost two centuries ago. After a frantic pace four years of building, President Kubitschek could move the government from Rio de Janeiro to Brasilia. He had given the dream its form. land of Brazil was open, and its people proudly watched Brasilia's inaugural parade. The people could, had they wished, remember that it was 1823 when Jose Bonifacio named the yet unborn city Brasilia, or 1891, when the first Republican constitution ordered the transfer to the inland capital, or the 20th century when surveys and plans brought the dream closer to reality. But this was their day. Viva Brasilia! Viva Brasilia! On the edge of the city is Embassy Row, which President Dwight D. Eisenhower visited early in 1960. Here, he compared Brasilia with the opening of the United States' own frontier. Embassies of the world will build along the Avenue of Nations. Brasilia is a city of energy. It was conceived in the energy of man's mind and vision. It was built with the energy of petroleum, which man's mind released from the earth to assist the energy of his muscles. At first, everything needed in the city came by aircraft. A tiny airstrip became a busy airport. Roads came next. Brasilia was deliberately placed far inland to open up the nation's vast interior. And ribbons of asphalt are planned to all parts of the country. A highway network is now a building. The new city itself will be a motorist dream. There are few traffic lights, few intersections. Thus, traffic will move more safely a personal wish of Lucio Costa, who planned it that way. While a permanent Brasilia is rising, a temporary city thrives next door. It is the free city, 
a bustling, friendly place like all Western towns, the base camp of the construction men who are building Brasilia. Brazilians are coming to Brasilia to start a new life, to make a new home. The construction of Brasilia is under the control of a government company called, for brevity's sake, Novacap. It is headed by Israel Pinheiro, a man who knows how to multiply the skills of men by the might of machines, to build a city in the shortest time. His men came from every part of Brazil to lend their skills to history in the making. The work to be done was monumental. Night and day it went on until the city could be opened and dedicated in a miraculously short time. Apartments and offices, hospitals and theaters, stores and schools rose in the noisy tempo of gasoline and diesel engines on all sides. The Cathedral of Brasilia perhaps best characterizes the audacity of Oscar Niemeyer, as well as his sense of unity and harmony. Its 21 columns rise from a perfect circle in a grand sweep toward the infinite. For years to come, Brasilia will grow and the face of the land will change. Earth movers handled with the skill of the men who are now part of the dream supply the drive which is shaping the new frontier. It is not merely the hope, but the conviction of Brazil's men of vision that Brasilia will hasten the country's march forward. President Kubitschek may have sounded the proper note when he said, I awakened the giant and shook him from north to south. <laughs>